Hey, freshman chitlins. Uh, so this is what virtual is going to look like today. Uh, I'm going to record a video for you guys um, as if I was actually in class and teaching you from there. Um, I am coming to you from my bedroom and I don't know if you can see my pups back there. Riley and Romeo. They are sound asleep. Um, they may interrupt us by barking and making lots of noise at some point. We shall see. Uh, but I'm going to make this as painless as possible and pretend like we're in class. So we're going to do the best that we can. Um, so we are heading to Australia. I'm super excited. I was trying to decide uh, which direction I wanted to go. If we wanted to go into the Pacific Ocean and talk about Oceania or if I wanted to go over to Southeast Asia. Uh, and I decided to negate Southeast Asia and head straight down to Australia for time purposes. And we actually are going to go to Oceania as well. But we're going to hit Australia and New Zealand first and then head out to the ocean uh, and spend some beautiful time on some of the islands in the um, Pacific like Tahiti and Hawaii and the Solomon Islands and some other beautiful uh, places including New Zealand which is um, home to Middle Earth if you're a Hobbit slash Lord of Rings fan. Uh, and so anyway, we're gonna start in Australia. I figured that would probably be the easiest thing for me to do with this virtual uh, lesson. And so um, Australia is super fun because it is just such an unusual place and um, unusual creatures, um, unusual history, um, incredibly beautiful uh, land, uh, a variety of landscapes. Uh, the people have a pretty cool accent as well, and um, some some pretty famous people are from there. So, um, so we're gonna uh, dive into Australia. We do share a common heritage with Australia. Uh, Australia was a um, has a connection with the British Empire as we do, and of course English is the uh, primary language spoken in Australia. Although they do speak the Queen's English, um, and uh, uh, but they started out as what's called a a penal colony, which means that it was used as a place for prisoners, for British prisoners. Uh, during the uh, 1700s, 1800s, England encountered um, a lot of poverty, a lot of homelessness, a lot of people without work got into trouble legally, their prisons were overflowing, and so sometimes the, the courts of England would pronounce somebody's um, uh, their punishment was to be sent to these penal colonies that were far removed from the island of Great Britain and punishable uh, by execution if you returned uh, to the to the um, home island of Great Britain. So uh, that's how Australia got its start. That's not how it stayed, but um, today it is a primarily English-speaking country with lots of British heritage, and the local, uh, the Aborigine people, the people native to the island are. Uh, there are still some there, but their culture was almost lost in the uh, years after the British landed there. Uh, we'll talk about that another time. So, uh, what I've done is I have uploaded a um, PowerPoint for you in Google Classroom as well as I emailed a copy to you. Sometimes Google Classroom does not allow me to upload my, my PowerPoint because the pictures that I oftentimes use are very high resolution uh, and there's a lot of them and uh, Google Classroom only has a certain capacity. Uh, so if you find yourself unable to um, open up the PowerPoint uh, that I have uploaded to Google Classroom, then check your email and um, you should be able to pull it up that way. So um, what was I going to say? So uh, put your computer in split screen, watch me talking uh, in this video, and follow along with the PowerPoint that I'm gonna give you. What I'll do is, rather than having you copy notes like you would if we were in class, I'm gonna make you a copy of the PowerPoint and the definitions um, and have that available to you so that you don't have to spend your time during this video lecture writing everything down. But do pay attention. You'll be tested over this information. Uh, speaking of tests, um, it looks like everybody got theirs uploaded. I had a couple that did it late, but I'm not sure if they just didn't hit the submit button or what, but um, uh, I will get those graded as soon as I can. Most likely won't get them graded until, um, and turn back to you till next week. Um, just the nature of the beast. Trying to do this virtual stuff uh, is pretty time consuming, but um, I hope to have those done within the next few days. So, Australia, here we come. I will also be asking you guys to 
watch some videos associated with the lecture and you can do a couple of different things. You can pause the video, I'm sorry, pause my video, my lecture video, and watch the videos as we're talking about them in the lecture. You'll see a little film strip on the picture when I'm talking about it, which is your cue that you should go watch the video. Sometimes people prefer to watch my video, my video lecture, look at the PowerPoint, and then go back and watch all of the videos associated with the lesson. You can do it that way. Probably, It won't probably uh, have as much emphasis that way, but if you want to do it that way, you can. Um, and then there is a, there's a di daily assignment log that you'll need to complete when this lesson is over with, with some instructions. There is a, you do have a little bit of work that you need to do on your own during this class period. So I'm trying to design this to be about a 90 minute class. Uh, take you about 90 minutes as if you were in school. So, um, what else? Oh, please don't uh, watch the video in increased speed. Uh, my video or the videos that I'm going to ask you to watch. Um, I Every year I have, or last year when we were doing virtual, I had the kids that did that a lot. I'm going to ask you uh, about that in the daily assignment log. So please do not watch this on increased speed um, on your uh, computer. So, all right, so if you will open up your PowerPoint, I'm going to zip through some of the stuff with you. Um, to kick us off on our discussion about Australia, the fact of the day today is the Tasmanian Devil. So the Tasmanian Devil is actually a marsupial that is unique to the continent of Australia, actually uh, unique to a part of the continent called the Tasmanian Province, which is in the southern part of Australia. Uh, they are a marsupial, as I said, and um, there is a character in, is it Warner Brothers? I can't remember. It's the Bugs Bunny um, uh, cartoons called Taz. He's supposed to be a Tasmanian devil, and uh, there's a picture of him here on the PowerPoint. Um, the reason he's called Taz is because he sort of mimics in the cartoons the ferocious way that Tasmanian devils eat their food and the crazy noises that they make. So they're pretty scary little creatures. Um, I think they look like rodents. They're not classified as rodents, but I think they look like rodents. Uh, they, they are nocturnal. They sleep at, uh, during the day and they hunt at night. And they have a massive jaw. Uh, they're just not very cute. So um, they also kind of have the coloring of a skunk. So um, the Tasmanian devil is going to be um, our fact of the day. Uh, you will be required uh, to write down six facts of the day. And I've got that set up um, in your daily assignment log. So if you want to just write them down by hand right now, you can, um, and then transfer them over, which is what I would recommend that you do. So have a piece of scrap paper out. Uh, before we jump into our fact of the day, however, uh, I want to just uh, mention, uh, look, go talk about a couple of these slides. Uh, I'm actually going to put my glasses on, and then we will jump back to the Tasmanian devil here in just a minute. But uh, there's a picture of the uh, map of the continent of Africa. And uh, it has the various provinces, and you can see the Tasmanian province, Tasmania, is the southern part of Australia. Uh, the movie that we watched called Lion, about the little boy that was adopted from an Australian family, his family was from Tasmania. That's where that he grew up. Uh, and let's see here. I believe I'm looking for the city that he traveled to. So if you'll see where Melbourne is, it's also in the southern um, cap or the county of Victoria. Um, and that is where he was going to school to um, get his degree in whatever, I can't remember now what it was, um, hotel management or something. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, I think there's seven provinces uh, in Australia. The inside of the continent is very not very populated because it's just sparse grassland. Most of the people live along the coast. Um, there are some beautiful forest, heavy forests and such along some of the coastal areas that we'll talk about it on another day. You'll also notice that the British flag, or I'm sorry, the Australian flag is in the bottom corner of this map. And the, um, the Australian flag, uh, ha again, shows its roots. It's got the British flag, or the flag of the United Kingdom uh, in the top left corner. And then um, it has um, some other stars on the map. And I meant to um, Google what those meant. I knew what they meant at one time. I think they stand for the provinces, but I don't remember. Um, so I'll get back to you on that. But anyway, there is a connection there. Just like our flag uh, carries over the colors of the British flag, red, white, and blue, um, the, uh, the um, flag of Australia actually has the entire British flag within it. 
All right, the next um, slide that you'll see uh, is a picture of uh, the Australian continent with a bunch of um, areas that show where there were fires at. I don't know if you guys remember this, but before COVID-19 hit last year, uh, in I think starting in the fall, late, late summer, fall over here, and going through January and February in Australia, they were just uh, really struggling through some unbelievably massive fires. Uh, more so than they've ever seen in their history. And uh, the images that were coming out of Australia were just really heartbreaking. They'd had three years or four years of drought. And so they were hoping for rain to put these fires out because literally their um, fire control departments were completely helpless. Uh, large numbers of um, animals were dying. I, I read somewhere that upwards of a billion animals died during these fires. Uh, in 2020 and spilled over into 2021. Then about the time that COVID-19 kind of overwhelmed us here uh, in March, um, they began to have lots of rain in Australia that finally settled the fires down. But some of the images that were coming out of Australia were, were uh, especially if you're an animal lover, uh, were absolutely horrific. But you'll notice from the picture that most of the fires, while there were some in the central part of the continent, most of them were on the coast where there's lots of wooded forest areas, uh, thus they were burning, uh, where much of the wildlife live. There are a few pictures of some of the um, smoke debris, and uh, there's an image of a, a structure on fire in a neighborhood, somebody's home, and there is a kangaroo outside of that home, and then some really sad pictures of koala bears. Uh, who have been trapped in the forest. Um, lots and lots of koala bears lost their lives. They are tree lovers, and so um, lots of them died. Uh, there were lots of sad video videos of uh, rescued koala bears and people going into the forest. I saw one, um, I saw this on the nightly news when this was all happening, where um, along the road there was a forest that had some spotty fires, and this woman saw a koala bear just sitting in the debris and he had burned his paws and, and just basically couldn't move. And so uh, she ran over to him and she wrapped him up in some clothing and poured uh, bottled water on his paws and was trying to get him to drink. And she actually picked him up and took him back to her car and rescued him. Um, but there was a lot of that going on. It was pretty sad images. Um, and the last image of the koala bear here is, I think he's at a vet and he has lots of uh, burn marks and scars and they're tending to him. Uh, so there is a film strip on this particular a picture of this koala bear at the vet and I'd like for you to watch about an eight minute um, video um, that I think PBS did um, about the rescue efforts for animals in uh, Australia. Um, it's really really interesting they show a whole variety of animals not just the koala bears. Um, the flying fox, um, there are a couple of other things, um, possums, koala bears. It's really, really interesting. But um, there is a little bit of a um, evolutionary overtone in part of the video talking about global warming and, and whatnot. Um, so just push through that. Um, most of it is very, very informative and interesting. So I wanted you to watch that. So if you want to pause my video and go watch that video, it should be the very first video underneath my signature in the instructions in Google Classroom. I'll put the videos in order and you can click on those uh, and watch those. So when you're finished watching that, uh, we're going to come back to our Tasmanian Devil fact of the day. So I have a couple of pictures of the Tasmanian Devil. I, in particular, I wanted you to see his horrid teeth. Uh, there's an image of the Taz with his mouth wide open, very scary. They also make some really creepy noises. Uh, they scream and howl, and uh, when they do come across food, uh, they fight over it. Uh, they're pretty um, rascally fellows. Um, let me put my glasses on, and I'm going to read through um, my fact of the day sheet. <sighs> Let's see here. Okay. Uh, the Tasmanian devils have a notoriously cantankerous disposition and will fly into maniacal rage with threatened, uh, when threatened by a predator or fighting for a mate or defending food. Early European settlers dubbed it the devil after witnessing such displays, which included teeth bearing, lunging, and an array of spine chilling guttural growls. These famously feisty mammals have a coat of coarse brown or black fur and a stocky profile that gives them the appearance of being a baby bear. Most have a white stripe or patch on their chest and light spots on their sides or rear end. 
They have long front legs and shorter rear legs, giving them a lumbering pig-like gait. I think they do look like pigs. Um, the Tasmanian Devil is the world's largest carnivorous marsupial. Let me say that again. The Tasmanian Devil is the world's largest carnivorous marsupial so they are a meat-eating marsupial they carry their young in a pouch uh, they reach about 30 inches in length and they weigh about 26 pounds now obviously kangaroos are bigger than that but kangaroos are not carnivorous they do not eat meat um, sizes will vary but in general they're about 30 inches long and weigh about 26 pounds um, its oversized head houses sharp teeth and strong muscular jaws that can deliver pound for pound one of the most powerful bites of any mammal. Tasmanian devils are strictly carnivorous, surviving on small prey such as snakes, birds, fish, and insects, and frequently feasting communally, meaning together, on carrion. Uh, now, you may ask what carrion is. It's gonna be one of your definitions today, but basically carrion is roadkill. They love to find a meal that's been killed by something else and they will feast on it. They have the ability, the bacteria within their system that they can eat food that might kill a human being if they ate it. Um, they are at their most rowdy when they are jockeying for position on a large carcass. Like other marsupials, they are when they are well fed, their tails, this is so gross. Like other marsupials, when they are well fed, their tails swell with stored fat. Ooh. Devils are solitary and nocturnal, spending their days alone in hollow logs, caves, and burrows, and emerging at night to feed. They use their long whiskers and excellent sense of smell and sight to avoid predators and locate prey and carry on. They will eat pretty much anything they can get their teeth on, and when they do find food, they are voracious, consuming everything, including the hair, the organs, and the bones. My cat won't even do that. Um, mothers give birth after about three weeks of pregnancy to a 20, I'm sorry, to 20 or 30 very young, tiny uh, Tasmanian devils. They are the size of raisins, and after they deliver, they crawl up into the mother's fur pouch. However, the mother has only four nipples, so only a handful of babies survive. So they have 20 or 30, but just a handful survive. Infants emerge after about four months and are generally weaned by the sixth month and live on their own by the eighth month. So they're kicked out pretty quick. So I'm assuming you got six uh, various facts from that, but they are super creepy. So um, I want you to, um, after you finish uh, writing your six facts of the day down, um, uh, this particular Tasmanian devil has a film strip on him. Uh, so there is a short little, I don't know, four or five minute video from, I think it's National Geographic, um, that um, uh, has a little bit of a, a, a show or story on the Tasmanian Devil. So go watch that. And then when you come back, I'm going to zip through these notes pretty quickly. Um, but the next thing on this PowerPoint is the definition carry on. And it says dead and decaying flesh of an animal, oftentimes eaten by carnivorous mammals, such as the Tasmanian Devil. And so there is a super gross picture on this slide. Uh, of a Tasmanian devil eating lunch there. Um, looks like a kangaroo is laying in a road, so he's probably been hit by a car. Uh, his rib cage, his ribs are showing in the picture and the Tasmanian devil is just having a really good meal there. Ooh, okay, moving on to notes. Uh, we'll have some other definitions after we do notes. They're kind of mixed up today. All right, just some general fast facts about Australia. Um, Australia is considered a continent um, however, some people tongue-in-cheek call it the largest island on the planet, uh, but it is considered one of our continents. It has a population of about 25 million people. I already mentioned this, but it was a British penal colony, uh, a faraway island, you know, so to speak, island used by the British to deposit criminals. Um, uh, today, it is a constitutional democracy. It has six states, I said uh, seven earlier, and I'm gonna guess, looking at the flag again, there are six stars on the flag. So I'm guessing that those six stars represent the six states. Um, Queen Elizabeth is considered the sovereign of Australia, just as she's considered the sovereign um, of, of the United Kingdom. Um, queen, basically. Uh, it is the driest continent in the world. 
but it does have areas on the continent that are considered tropical rainforest. So the majority of the continent is dry and barren, especially the interior part of it, known as the bush. Um, and it's just a huge flat grassland um, and gets very, very, very little rain. Um, it has the world's largest coral reef um, along the eastern side of the, of the continent. It's called the Great Barrier Reef. I'm sure that you've heard of it. Uh, it's the northeastern part of the continent. Uh, it is one of the biggest attractions to Australia, especially for sailors and scuba divers and others. And so, um, talk about that in a little bit. Some of the wildlife that you can find exclusively in Australia include kangaroos, although I know we have some gentry in some of our zoos. Uh, kangaroos are native to the continent of Australia. They, they do not breed anywhere else native naturally in the world, um, although they've been taken to other parts of the world for zoo, to zoos and that sort of thing. As far as I know, there are no kangaroos that live in the wild anywhere else other than uh, Australia. Koala bears are native to Australia. Um, I think I've mentioned this before and you'll see some pictures of koala bears, but koala bears prefer nuts and fruits that fall off uh, various trees or grow uh, near the ground and they uh, the, when they they like the fruit once the fruit has become fermented and so they eat a lot of fermented fruits and they become intoxicated and so um, a lot of people think that they're kind of slap happy animals or lazy or sleep a lot but they're actually drunk uh, a lot of the time um, of course the Tasmanian devil is unique to Tasmania uh, the emu is native to Australia. The platypus uh, is native to Australia. Um, an interesting fact, and this is in your notes, that um, 80%, 80, 80, 80% of the animals found in Australia cannot be found anywhere else in the world naturally. Um, so I, again, going back to Noah's Ark and the flood, I just think that when God broke up the world with the flood and the continents began to separate, a lot of... Um, a lot of animals um, after the, after Noah's Ark and they disembarked from that boat and they went to various places, I think the continents continue to shift apart. And I think that that's why we have unique creatures in various parts of the world. And Australia apparently floated far quickly and far away with a lot of unique animals. Um, let's see here, natural resources. Um, Australia has actually a lot of natural resources and a lot of money-making natural resources. By the way, I took my nails off and so I'm a little self-conscious of that. If I keep closing my hands, that's why. Um, sorry. Uh, oil has lots of oil, natural gas, and it is one of the world's top producers of diamonds and opals. So um, it has a good resource, um, a good profitable uh, natural resources. Um, the most famous landform in Australia is this giant red rock in the middle of nowhere called the Aluru Rock, or sometimes referred to as the Ayers Rock because it was discovered by a British um, guy who let, first laid eyes on it. And he wasn't the first person to see it, but he was the first Westerner, or first British to see it. And so um, it's sometimes named after him that it's like dropping um, uh, elk. Uh, what's that one in uh, Yosemite? El Capitan, uh, which is a very famous rock, flat rock mountain uh, that rises from the ground in Yosemite National Park. Um, it's just, it's just, I can't even imagine how big it is. I don't know the exact dimensions of it. And it's deceptive when you see images of it because you're seeing it from far away, but there is nothing around it for, I don't know, 100 miles or something. It almost looks like it fell out of the sky. Um, and it's a very, it's probably the most famous physical landmark in Australia. And there'll be some pictures of it as well. Uh, and then lastly, in the, the note section of this, uh, uh, the, Australia is part of what's known as the Commonwealth of Nations that have a common relationship with the British Empire. And so uh, India is another one of those countries. Let me list off some of them. There's a map here that shows them. Canada, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, um, Bangladesh, Sierra Leone, Liberia, um, and maybe where Granger and his family lived. I can't tell from looking at the map, uh, but there's several countries in south, the southern part of the African continent. Um, and then there's a couple uh, in South America, and there's a few island countries in the Caribbean that are all part of the British 
or the United Kingdom Commonwealth of Nations. And so I don't know if all of them do, but many of them consider Queen Elizabeth, the current Queen Elizabeth, as their own sovereign or own monarch. Um, I don't know if there's a mutual um, commitment for protection of these places by the British, if there's a tax that is paid. I don't think so. Um, there's probably special trade agreements that take place. At one time, all of those places were um, members of the colonial empire of the British, as were we, but of course we are no longer a member of the, um, the British or the United Kingdom Commonwealth of Nations. So um, they probably, all of these various places, um, they have a common language um, and I don't believe they have a common currency, but anyhow, anywho, um, take a look at that map and look at those countries and Granger, let us know if the country that you, your family uh, lived in in Africa is, is among them. All right, next uh, slide is um, the definition that says Aborigines and there are some pictures there. These are the original inhabitants of Australia. Um, they look a little bit islandy, a little bit African. They're very small people, uh, very unique. They almost look more islandy than anything else, but sometimes they have blonde tones to their hair, occasionally blue eyes. So there's definitely some interaction with Europeans at some point. Um, sadly, they were a very suppressed people when the British came there. Um, and the British even had a policy up until probably the, I'm gonna say around World War II, maybe the 1930s, 1940s, they had a policy in Australia uh, by which they forbid the marriage of British citizens with the Aborigine people because they did not want to produce these people that were half British, half Aborigine. Um, and so they separated them, um, children, uh, families that were mixed race were discouraged from staying together um, they actually there were laws that prohibited uh, marriage between the two it was just horrible um, there's actually a a movie that i watched years ago called the rabbit fence that talks about uh, this policy in australia uh, that the british uh, were involved with it's kind of similar to uh, not i shouldn't compare it to that but uh, in keeping with the eugenics uh, ideals that the Nazi party tried to enforce um, creating this master race. There was a little bit of that thinking going on um, in this policy, but obviously over time, it, you know, people were like, this is horrible. Uh, and so, um, and I think they even had, have a day, kind of, a, it's like a national day of recognition or forgiveness for what, uh, for the policy. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we're together. But anyway, I wanted you to see a picture of those. Uh, and then the next slide is a picture of the Ayers Rock. Uh, or the Aluru Rock. And again, it's hard to tell from this picture the massive size of this rock, but it is out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's a picture of Prince William and Kate. Uh, Prince William is third in line for the British Crown um, on one of their goodwill tours to the Commonwealth Nations. They stopped and posed there in front of the um, Aluru Rock, just as William's mother, Princess Diana, and Prince Charles had done when they were first married. Uh, so there's a picture there you can see. It's similar to the, I think it was the same tour they went on when I showed you the picture of them in front of the Taj Mahal. Um, and then there are two or three, four pictures of the Great Barrier Reef. Um, the, the Barrier Reef is a living organism, um, and there are fish and dangerous animals and sea turtles and all kinds of other things that live amongst the reef. Uh, along with humans that come to scuba dive and snorkel. Uh, there's some pictures there of some guys scuba diving, and then there's a picture there of um, a sea turtle. Um, so some very rare sea turtles live amongst the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, you can get into some serious trouble if you kill yourself a sea turtle. Um, uh, and in this video, there's a video associated with the sea turtle picture that I want you to watch. It's only a couple, it's like a minute and a half long. Uh, but some scientists um, with I don't know, the University of Melbourne or something, um, tied a small camera to the back of a sea turtle that was only intended to last for like 60 seconds just to see what it would look like as he swam through the ocean and came up for water. So I want you to watch that. It's really, it's really quite fascinating to see uh, from the eyes of a sea turtle what the Great Barrier Reef looks like. He even goes up for water and then comes back down and he seems to be looking over his shoulder like he knows that there's something on his back and eventually... Um, it falls off. I think it's designed to fall off and then the uh, crew go and pick up the camera. Um, so watch that. And then there are a couple of pictures of 
scuba divers in this little uh, section here. And one of them is something I would love to try someday. It's a very unique way to scuba dive. Uh, and it sort of looks like underwater jet skis, but you're connected to the boat above you by a cord and you can see it, you're completely enclosed. So if you run into a great white shark or something of that nature, you are fairly protected. Uh, and it doesn't, uh, it's not nearly as um, strenuous um, having to swim and whatnot because you're actually sitting on this this thing you can probably uh, see a lot more um, see a lot more ground as well so anyway someday we'll give that a shot uh, great white sharks are common among uh, among the Great Barrier Reef because they are actually uh, looking for food uh, the reef brings in a lot of food and then of course um, the box jellyfish which is the most venomous marine animal uh, in the world um, and is very very dangerous there are whole sections of the beach um, around, I believe, the northern part of Australia that are closed to the public for about six months of the year because it's these things come in during certain seasons and then they go back out uh, and they are very, very deadly. Um, they have, uh, the video you're gonna watch shows, that, well, I don't know if I have it on this, no, I don't, they didn't put it, include that video, uh, but they have beaches, they have um, netted off areas of the ocean that prevent the jellyfish from getting through and so during that six month period of time, if people go to the beach, they, ha they can only swim in those areas. Uh, outside of those areas are very, very dangerous. And so there is a short video associated with that. The next slide is, is the definition venomous. So what's the difference between venomous and poisonous? Uh, so a venomous creature or critter is something that injects venom. It can bite you or sting you as opposed to um, drinking something. Uh, so a jellyfish is considered, this particular jellyfish is considered venomous because its tentacles, when it rubs across your skin, it actually stings you and injects, actually injects the poison. Uh, so there's a short video. Uh, there's a guy that does a show, I think it's called River Monsters or something like that, but he goes looking for really scary critters in waters. And so it's, again, only a couple minutes long, but he goes into the Australian ocean, the waters around Australia, uh, and he actually picks up a huge box jellyfish with the assistance of some scientists who are, all, are very familiar with it. And he holds it up and you can see the thing breathing and you can see the mass of tentacles and, they, and what they do is they cut the tentacles off and then they use the tentacles to create anti-venom so that when people do get stung, there is a, a chance if, if they can get to medical care uh, that they can be saved. So watch that video. And then, okay, uh, next definition is marsupials. Uh, marsupials are mammals that carry their young in a pouch. Uh, the most famous, uh, the ones that you'll find in Australia again are the kangaroos, the koalas, possums. Uh, the only North American marsupial we have are what we call possums, but they're actually opossums. Um, they're called possums in Australia. Here they're called opossums. They, do, they actually look very different. Um, wombats, which <laughs> are the craziest critters, craziest looking things. They look like something out of The Hobbit or something. Uh, and then of course the Tasmanian devil. So. Excuse me. Um, when I'm in class, I'm going to show you a couple of videos of um, my son delivering opossum babies uh, during quarantine uh, back in, I don't know, April or May or something. We had a possum die in our backyard and she was pregnant and she had all these babies inside of her pouch. So we, we rescued them and we actually got it on video. So, uh, but anyway. Um, so in North America, the only marsupial that we have that is native to our neck of the woods are the opossums. Uh, and there are pictures here of opossums and the one with the baby pouch there looks very, very familiar. Uh, and if you will compare the opossum with the Australian possum, uh, the, this Australian possum almost looks like a squirrel. Uh, it looks very, very different. It's much cuter than ours. Ours are a little bit creepy rat looking. Uh, then there's Steve Irwin holding a wombat. They're so cute. Uh, and his wife with a crew of wombats at the, um, at the zoo that the Irwins uh, run in Australia. Uh, there is a video associated with that. And so it, it's only a couple minutes long, but they go to, it's a video that takes place at the zoo that they, they own or operate. Uh, and it's a, a young wombat that they introduce you to and super cute. Pictures of kangaroos, um, some pictures of koala bears, and you can tell that they have been, they look slightly intoxicated. 
And then of course the platypus. Uh, who can forget the platypus? So uh, the platypus is the weirdest thing. Um, it's one of the weirdest creatures I've ever seen actually. So uh, the definition for a platypus is a semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal. There's only two of them in the world. This is one of them, an egg-laying mammal that is, uh, found only in Eastern Australia, including, uh, which includes the state of Tasmania. It is only one of two mammals that lay eggs instead of giving birth. And it is also one of the few venomous mammals. And so it's got something, I believe, on its back feet or tail, I have to look that up, I can't remember now, uh, in order like, to protect itself from predators that might be swimming after it. Uh, but they spend most of their time in the water, but they look like a duck. And they also look like a, a beaver, sort of, or an otter. They are the weirdest, weirdest looking critter. There's a few pictures of them here. Uh, there's a map that shows you where they can be found, and then there's a couple babies, and they, they look like ducks as babies. Um, and then there's a picture of a full grown one outside of the water. In this picture, he looks like an otter to me, except he's got this weird beak duck looking thing. It is just the weirdest thing. Uh, and then a very, very little baby drinking out of, it's like the size of the person's hand. It almost looks like a seal in this picture. And then the very last definition is um, the thylacinus. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, but I'm gonna go with that. Um, also known um, as the Tasmanian tiger. And we I mentioned this last week, uh, but the, I think I did to your class. It may have been to the other class, but the thylacinus is a carnivorous marsupial. Remember we talked about the Tasmanian devil being a carnis, carnivorous marsupial. Uh, it's the largest of its kind. Well, the um, thylacinus or the Tasmanian tiger is extinct now, or they think that it's extinct. Every now and then you'll hear someone say that they've seen one. Uh, the last two in captivity, uh, died in the 1930s. As far as I knew, there were none in the wild. They were un unsuccessful um, getting these two to have babies. Um, and so they look like a, uh, a dingo, which is a wild dog in Australia, uh, coupled with a tiger, because it has stripes on its back. Uh, but it's a marsupial too. It has a pouch and carries its baby and young, uh, its babies in a pouch, and it eats meat like a, a cat would. So it's a weird looking creature. I, I kind of hope that they still exist in the wild. Probably not, but every now and then you'll have a farmer say, oh yeah, we saw one the other day, uh, but nobody's taken any pictures of them. So that concludes the PowerPoint. I will make copies of these images for you. And so what you need to do is make sure you watch all of the videos in regular time um, and then transfer your six facts of the day um, on the, um, Tasmanian Devil uh, to the daily assignment log and it'll say Tasmanian Devil and it'll give you six spots. Make sure they're written in complete sentences, capitalized and punctuated. Uh, and then um, the final part of today's instructions is that the coral reef has what is known, uh, the Great Barrier Reef, I'm sorry, has what's known as the Great Eight. And these are eight critter, cr sea critter, critters um, that um, scuba divers and snorkelers and people that um, sail out there look for. Um, and if you see all eight of these in the course of your lifetime, you're a lucky person. So um, it would be like if I was going to Africa and I, there were eight specific critters that I wanted to see, um, but there, some of them are difficult to actually lay eyes on. So I want you to upload a picture of each of these eight great eight from the Great Reef Barrier. Uh, and I will have that set up in Google Classroom in, in, in a uh, Google Slides format. Um, please make sure that the pictures are large enough resolution, uh, that the pictures are clear, and if you would just include what they are, the name of what they are on the slide with a picture on it. So, uh, and then submit all of this information um, to Google Classroom before 9.30. Uh, so it looks like this, uh, my video lecture, is about 40 minutes long. Um, the videos that I want you to watch are about 25 minutes long, probably total, maybe not that long. Um, and then you'll um, fill in your daily assignment log, you will fill out your facts of the day, and then you will find um, your, <clears throat> your grade eight. Um, if you run out of time and you can't get the grade eight slides done, that can be turned in later, in fact, I think I will just upload it separately um, as a separate assignment that, and just have it due sometime tomorrow, or I'm sorry, today, 
um, sometime on uh, what is tomorrow Thursday um, but the but the daily assignment log and the fact of the day and watching the videos and all that will be due at 9 30 uh, if you want to do the great eight slides and turn it in sometime um, actually I'll just say that those are due by the end uh, of the day Friday um, make it our Google Classroom assignment for the week so anyway that's all I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and um, maybe I'll see you on Friday in the halls who knows bye